All right, welcome. Thank you all uh, here in person. Thank you online. Uh, for tonight's Jackson Systems training, we are right in the middle of our spring training session. We have a very familiar face uh, here to talk about Residio and Honeywell zoning. Mr. Gary Crosby, everybody give Gary a warm welcome here. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Don't you right. love that? Dennis is in the house, by the way. Dennis in the so house. So let's give Dennis a round of applause. Yeah, Dennis. Dennis Woo! is like a legend in the eating and air world here. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, we're appreciative to have you all here. Um, obviously, just like all the other trainings uh, that we do, this is meant to be interactive. So we want you guys to ask questions. Obviously, if you ask questions, we're going to have a better training, especially for you online. Everyone online watching, you have the ability to ask questions. There's a chat box. Uh, I will actually ask the questions for you and relay them to Gary um, so we can uh, get your questions answered online. And also... We're giving, having two giveaways two tonight. Two giveaways that we're giving away. What are we giving away today? We're giving away our top of the line zone panel. Tell them, panel. Gary, what are we giving away it's today? It's our zone panel kit from Residio. <laughs> yeah. It's our uh, HZ432, which is... Nice. It's it's really nice. It's the nicest one we make. And we're also doing one for we're our online. We're doing one for our online crowd and one for our live people, right? Perfect. And not that you're not live online, but <laughs> our live attendance. So uh, that way uh, you guys don't feel so gypped. Right. right? So And then uh, so we'll give that away. And then online, it'll be some sort of a virtual fishbowl. And it'll, they'll have to get back to you because we're not going to do it. We're going to have Laura do it. Right, and, uh, but she, we're going to announce it tonight. Left. Though we're, gonna, we're actually we're going to announce we're going to announce the hey, winner tonight. Tyler's got the list better. in the back, so he's going to do like some random thing. But also, have, uh, the big deal about up. this training, Gary, is that this is a Nate accredited course. Yep. Everything um, we do is Nate. So. so there are two credit hours available. Um, so it has to be an hour and a half. Um, so that's I'm going to leave we, it up to you. We got you here. two hours of stuff to do. So well, let's do an hour. We'll go through and see. I can't do an hour. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, Gary, you've been with uh, Residio Honeywell for how long? Uh, since 2006. Yeah, so Gary knows his stuff. Um, I guess, what do you want everyone online and here in person to walk away with as far as we talk when we talk about Honeywell zoning? Uh, don't be scared of zoning. Zoning's not something to be afraid of. A lot of people are afraid of it. Right. You know, it's and once you know what you're looking for and, uh, and, and what you can and can't do, right? Because you can't zone everything. Right. Um, and it's more than just a function of new construction. So uh, there's some retrofit opportunities out there. And if the homeowner can't afford that, there's some other options you can do as well. And we'll touch on a few of those. But Big C-Pro point opportunities don't be scared here of zoning. too with the Honeywell zoning as well, right? Uh, it, it is. Uh, uh, actually, we're, we're giving five times the points the whole month of May. So awesome. it's a good, uh, good way to load up some, uh, some points. And if you're not signed up on our C-Pro program, which is a loyalty uh, program like like any other you run into yeah. so like everywhere you go it's like do you have our card <laughs> right like no just give it to me just <laughs> go right. ahead and charge me more well gary you take it away and I like i said please do not hesitate to ask questions whether you're here in person or online but uh take it away gary Thank cool you. so uh kind of standing in the church of zoning aren't we this is ron jackson's temple right um i love ron jackson dearly uh he's one of the best uh uh, people you'll ever meet. He's also one hell of an inventor, and uh, being getting to work with uh, with these guys as a distributor has been been a lot of fun because I get to kind of see what Ron Jackson's up to and his little deal there. So um, we, uh, because they are a distributor, they they sell uh, a bunch of different product lines, and Honeywell's one of them, Ryder Honeywell Home. So uh, they've been carrying our zoning line for quite a while. Um, but I don't think I've ever really done a formal training on it here, so so we're going to get into it tonight. Um, I'm going to do some of the marketing bit of it, right? Because you read, if you're doing, a, if you're in the retrofit business, uh, you got to understand what your customers are really uh, looking for when they're, you know, you, a lot of times you don't realize what they're looking for. You know, you go up, you're, like what we're doing right now is cleaning checks for spring, right? It was 44 degrees on Monday and it was 87 degrees this afternoon, so it's Indiana for you. Um, but we're cleaning uh, uh, systems for spring, and now's a great time to find out what, you know, to bring up those hot and cold spots again, right? Because, uh, you know, we hadn't, this is, uh, their upstairs are starting to get hot. And, and if you, if, and I was just gonna show you, when we do our focus groups, what shakes out, like what do homeowners really want? 
So, of course, the number one thing in our survey is programmable setback thermostat. Most homeowners know that they'd probably like to have at least that to try to save some money. Um, and then you get into smart thermostat comes down there, um, which is the Wi-Fi or some way to control it from your phone. Then you get into duct system repairs or, or replacement of the equipment. Um, and then dehumidifier, insulated air ducts, uh, air cleaners of some sort. And zoning comes in pretty high on the chart, right? They, don't, they may not know what zoning is, right? Because to somebody not in heating and air, zoning is a, is a land transaction. Is it zoned commercial or residential, right? So what I've always tried to do is a, is when I was a tech and sold stuff directly to homeowners is try to find out something, first of all, find out what their pain is, right? Because, I mean, these guys just moved into a brand new house. And if they weren't lucky enough to have Dennis put the system in, they probably never even got the chance to zone it, did they, Dennis? You know, I mean, not not every new construction builder wants to even let you talk to the homeowner. It's it's a it's really bad, right? But that's the best time to zone a house because nothing's in your way, right? I can I can run wires all over the place. I can put dampers in without finished drywall ceilings, which Dennis has to go out and fight tomorrow when he should be at Carb Day, right? <laughs> We're from Indiana. Um, if you don't know what carb day is, look it up. Um, but but this this is what you run into out there, right? The guy just paid half a million dollars for a house, and they're roasting upstairs in the summer. They just moved into this place. Never happens, does it? Right? Happens all the time. And now some people never bring it up, even though the tech just came and cleaned the system for uh, for spring, right? That got the air conditioner all ready to go. So. The problem isn't that um, they didn't put two systems in. The problem is is that they didn't. Uh, they put the thermostat in the middle of the house, right? Well, the middle of the house cools off pretty quick. Well, what's that leave the upstairs to do? It's going to always be hot because, you know, um, hot air rises. Heat can go in any direction, by the way, right? Heat travels to where it's coldest, right? So at night, when your when your house finally cools off upstairs. Before that, that was you had a lot of infiltration coming down through whatever insulation you got, and then finally your your air conditioner can catch up with the hot attic fighting against the cold inside of the house. It's just thermodynamics going on. So when I shut off that main that downstairs stat says, "Hey, I'm 72. I'm shutting down the refrigeration process. I still need cooling upstairs." So I, I, whatever that main floor stat's doing, I'm. I'm kind of messed up all over the house, right? So that's why homeowners get upset. And as a technician that goes out and sees people's houses, I don't even have to ask. I mean, I can pull out front of the house in my van full of tools, ready to go clean the thing for spring, and look, and they've got one condenser out there. they got two floors of house. I already know, right? So what, I'm, what I want you to do is to think about that before the next house you go on and take a look at it and say, somebody's hot upstairs, right? And then when you get in there and do your service call and you start, you know, the home owner starts taking you around the house, you're looking at everything, get a temperature reading of upstairs and a temperature reading of downstairs on purpose, right? You're a technician. You should have a way to read temperature. You should always have a way to read humidity, right? And you should always be checking these parts of the house. And then when you got your ticket, and you're you're all done and you're like you know hey mr mr brake i got your house all cleaned up for spring uh system looks great but by the way i noticed it's 10 degrees hotter upstairs and downstairs how's that working for you answer me get the pizza out of your mouth and answer me sir i mean you pizza no that's that's what happened when we bought the house is the first thing i noticed our bedroom is above the garage so it is a cooker so the, the point I'm trying to make is, is that the question I asked JD, which was, it's, hot, it's 10 degrees hotter upstairs and down. Now, I didn't make that up, right? The homeowner watched me with my meter measure the upstairs temperature, watched me with my meter measure the downstairs temperature and subtract the two, okay? And I'm from Tennessee, I can even do that, right? So I put that down and then I asked that question, which is a open-ended question on purpose. I need to find out if this is painful for them, right? 
And there's actually a word for that. It's called the emotional trail. So if you're got any kind of sales training, this is the kind of stuff they teach you, right? A lot of technicians don't get sales trainings. They're just like, hey, you want fries with that? No. All right. We well, can't be that way. You got to really think about what you're doing, but you got to think about it in a technician point of view, right? I don't want you to be salesman first. I want you to be technician first, right? So think of yourself like a doctor. When you go to the doctor, they weigh you, they take your blood pressure, they take your temperature, and then if you're out of range, well, I got to find out why your blood pressure is high. No different than you're doing the, treating that condenser when you pull up and you drag all your tools out and you hook to it for the first time. Well, I got a problem. Well, let me find, let me get some diagnostics before I start spitting off prescriptions to you, right? Same thing when it comes to finding out indoor air quality and temperature differences and all that other stuff. It's so humid outside right now, right? It's bad. And I got a lot of R values, so I can really tell, right? So I'm like, I, I, but I'd sweat peeling an orange anyway, but today is really bad, right? So as a technician, I'm gonna take my psychrometer, I'm gonna set it on the counter, and I'm gonna get a dehumidification reading in that house. Do you do that every day, every time you're in a house? No, you don't, you should, right? You're a technician, those are things that technicians should do. You paid $400 for that fluke meter that reads temperature and does superheat and you know, fold your clothes, but you never pull it out of your bag. You should use it every day, right? So back to this, uh, now I got all that stuff, and what do I do with that information? We'll ask that question. We're talking about zoning here. It's 10 degrees hotter upstairs and downstairs. How's that working for you? That's when you hush and let them answer you. And they're never going to say, we love sweating to death at night upstairs. I love cranking that down to 60 to compensate for the upstairs. They're never going to say that. They're always going to spit out why they hate it, right? I moved here from Cincinnati three years ago. It's been hot upstairs for the last three years. What can we do about it, you know? That's the conversation. That's where you want to get your homeowner to, right? What can we do about it? Here's my problem. Here's why I hate it. And why did you bring it up? What can you do about it? Well, you're the heating and air guy. You're the only person that can do something about it. Unless they're really good plumbers, they're not going to figure the zoning out. Unless they're really good electricians, they're not going to figure the zoning out, right? It takes a really special, specialized, trained contractor to understand zoning, to look at the house, especially retrofit, and kind of, you know, if you've been in this business for a while, you've been a tech for a long time, it's amazing how you get x-ray vision in it. You know what I'm talking about? That technician thing you get from years of experience of going in houses and you're just like, well, that duck's got to be going through there, right? It, 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 that's how we do it. So you got to kind of have some of that, and then, and then you got to uh, look at the zone system or uh, look at the duct system, and if you can see the duct work and you can add the mechanical dampers to it, you're golden. If it's half covered up, you can't half zone a house, okay? You got to do something else. You either need to do some temperature averaging or, uh, or some sort of a, a thermostat system that allows the remote to be carried around or, or occupancy sensors or th something like that, okay? So we're going to talk about, I figured out that I can properly zone this house, now I got to talk to the homeowner about it and make, some, make an analogy around something they can understand. How many of you have a car that's got zoning in it? You're a foot away from your wife and she's like cold and you're hot or the other way around. You're only a foot away and you can really solve that problem, right? Even in your car. So imagine that big house being able to tell the homeowner I can make the upstairs, this, <coughs> excuse me, the same temperature as your downstairs and uh, improve it to them, right? And it works great. So how many of you have a house that's zoned now? Any of you? Anybody on, ask, ask them online, JD. Does anybody online have a house that wasn't zoned and then they zoned it? And tell me if they would ever move into a house without zoning it again, because my, I, that's how I live. I got a three story or a two story house um, bedrooms are upstairs, main floor, kitchen downstairs. And um, when we moved in, I said, well, I got a zone in or I'm not going to be able to move in to this house. And uh, so we had to, we had to zone it. So um, uh, ducts have to be ac accessible or you, can't, uh, or you can't zone it, okay? If they are accessible, then you can. 
And what we're trying to, to, to do here is stop this from happening where I'm fine on the, on the floor where the thermostat is, but I'm crazy up here and crazy down here, right? So once you add that zone system in, it's gonna allow that homeowner to have different areas of their house and have it whatever temperature they want. So it's like if I had three zones in a house that had one system, it would act like I've got three systems, okay? And we can actually have heat running in two zones or, or actually you could, you could have heat running in two zones and cooling in a third. Um, and then we uh, have our software won't allow that to be locked in. So it will change over uh, to those zones between heat and cool. But uh, uh, especially when you get into commercial, you might have heat and cool running. Yep. Uh, this isn't really a question, but I, I kind of want this to be addressed right now. Sure. Uh, Patrick from J&J &J Air, I, we were talking about the zoning. Yep. Um, he said he, he did balance he air balanced his house using dampers, but mm -hmm. no zoning. What's your thoughts on that? Is he happy? I would assume so. So it's kind of like buying a stereo and speakers, <laughs> right? It's like, do I get Clips or Pioneer? Well, it's whatever sounds good, right? So if, you, if you're able to move air around your house to pull cold air out of the basement and dump it upstairs, and you figured that out, great, right? But yeah, you're probably doing something manual. I don't know. This is automatic, right? And our homeowners want to buy stuff automatic. I mean, there's a lot of MacGyvers in heating and air, and we can. We're you guys are problem solvers, right? There is no uh, doubt in my mind that two of you in this room can't build a rocket and get it out of the atmosphere. I just believe it, right? So, um, but when you're packaging this to sell to a homeowner. Uh, it's got to be something that they don't have to do the hokey pokey to do. They just want to go to their phone. I got heat. I got cool. All three floors are happy, right? And that's what we deliver with a proper zoning system. So it's great, and and I have seen people do that. So it's it's fine. Um, now we got to lay this job out, right? So when you're doing new construction, you already already know what the the square footage is and stuff like that, but. Even when Dennis, uh, Dennis is the one new construction guy I know. Any y'all do new construction? All every, rest, everybody else retrofit. So uh, Dennis, you get a new set of prints. The electrical, they know where every electrical socket's going to go. They know where every plumbing fixture is going to go. But when you get the blueprint for the heating and air, it's a blank outline of the house, right? So what a good uh, a, um, new construction contractor has to do is run load calculation and know what each room is going to be CFM wise, right? Now that's great when you got a design team and you can run manual J and do all that stuff proper. Most retrofit companies don't have time to do that. And, um, but you, you probably still should, right? Cause I run loads, but, um, but you can also look at, at duct and kind of know how much air is going in there by the vent. Right. So if I got a four ton system and I got 10 um, six inch pipes on the main floor, how many CFM do I probably got on that main floor? I probably got a thousand CFM, right? I'm only running about 100 CFM through a six inch pipe. How many, ton, how many tons of air do I have with a four ton? 16. So the other 600 is going to the other zone. So you can look at rule of thumb. You can rule a thumb it by the pipe size going in the room to kind of know what the CFM is. But when you can zone one and do a room by room load calculation, actually spit out that the north side great room needs, you know, 375 of those CFM, it makes it a little easier to balance it, right? But still getting one, getting the, getting as much as you can going upstairs and as much as you can going downstairs dampered off and on a, on a, on a stat, it does a really, really good job. Okay. And so you have to divide your areas up on which time, which, what's going to be zone one, what's going to be zone two, three or four. We're just going to talk about four zones, right? Um, and, uh, I can do upstairs or downstairs, or, you know, make them upstairs, downstairs zone, or I can group my zones by my load, right? So I'm going to do like a thousand CFM on this part of the house and 600 upstairs and then branch it off that way and have two dampers. So there's a bunch of ways you can lay it out. Um, 
uh, and like JD was saying, you want to look for rooms above garage, right? Those are always going to be hotter than the main part of the house. Some uh, um, states have code that if you're three steps above the main floor, it has to be zoned or second system. I wish that was code here, right? And I think it's North Carolina and Georgia, at least Atlanta, uh, does that, right? So there's a ton of zoning in North Carolina and, and down south. Um, you want to avoid this really, really small zone. So like if I had a five ton, I probably ain't going to zone every single six inch damper coming off that plenum, right? I'm, I'm going to try to keep them relatively, uh, you know, keep it to a ton, maybe a little less than a ton in a zone or something. But there are people that branch line zone, but they're like five dampers on one, right? And they're kind of, they're still not a big, not a, they're acting like one big zone instead of six individuals, right? And the reason you want to do that is because you don't want to bypass just a, the, the whole brunt of that system back in or dump it somewhere or whatever. So uh, be careful how you're, you're laying that out. Um, so you can do like an upstairs, a downstairs, and a, you might have a home office or something around there. So I'm just going to use that as an example here. And um, so uh, I don't know why this is there right now, but it threw it in there, so I'll just go with it. Um, I'm going to, uh, this, is, this should have been at the very end, so I don't know why it's there. apologize. Um, now for our homeowners, what they're looking for is uh, that, first of all, you got to identify that problem, that the upstairs was hotter than the downstairs. They told you why. And, you know, they want to be comfortable where, where they're at, you know, everywhere in their house. They don't want it to be hot upstairs or they don't want to freeze to death in the basement. So uh, you, you can do all that. And um, you're only uh, using the heat and cooling where you need it in your house, right? So uh, when uh, my kids are away um, and I'm home, uh, their half of the house, I, I kind of keep set back, right? Because uh, I don't need, need it to be, as long as my humidity is good, right? So when we do zoning, we're going to ask that you do uh, um, the four big things, okay? First of all, you're going to need thermostats, right? And our panels can use just about every thermostat out there. Um, on, when you look at the, the panel, it's got R, C, W, Y, G, Y1, Y2, auxiliary, all the stuff you need, right? So it doesn't really matter uh, if, if they've got some existing stats or they got a favorite stat and it's not mine, it's, it's, it's okay, all right? Uh, we'll tie into it, yeah. Um, Patrick from J&J Air, again, he, he wants to know, are we gonna cover um, dump zones versus bypass damper for like a large difference of zones, prevent uh, liquid flood back to compressor or other suggestions to deal with that? Is that gonna yeah, be covered? Yeah, so, so we're gonna go over bypass, uh, and that's, that's actually the last part of what you need here. Okay. So yep, we got it. So you gotta have thermostats, got to have a zone panel kit, right? So you can't do zoning unless you have a panel, right? And, uh, and, and a lot of homeowners don't understand that, right? They go, well, how are we going to have three thermostats if only got one furnace? Well, you, um, you, you know, how many, how many, you, anybody got cable TV in here? Still, everybody cut the cord, right? So uh, when you got a cable TV from like Comcast and they actually give you a box and all that, you only got one line coming from the street, but you got three TVs, so they just put a splitter on it, right? I got one cable coming in, I got three coming out the top. Well, that's all a zone panel is, is a splitter, right? I'm taking the, the signal from the equipment, and I'm gonna uh, split that to have three zones to be able to, to actually do that. And, and the mechanical dampers is what's next. So once I got the, the thermostats installed and I got my dampers installed, I can separate them from each zone and, 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 and actually shut the main floor off so the second floor can still call and I've got my refrigeration process still going. I still got hot air being drug out of the upstairs and, and, uh, and cooling it off and dumping it, you know, extracting the heat just like I was doing on the main floor, just like I got two systems. And then my bypass. Now, um, you, have to, you don't have to have a bypass in a system but you have to ch manage your static pressure, right? So uh, Jackson on their zoning line, they have a, what's that thing called you have? The ESP, 
that actually modulates the dampers and lets air bleed through without a bypass. Um, we have on our uh, zone pan, our zone dampers, a manual uh, one, two, or three, and I'll explain what that is on a bleed through to manage static. Or we have our bypass damper, or we could do a dump zone. What you want to avoid to avoid uh, the guy's question from was it JJ era or JR era? Okay. So um, uh, if you're if you're uh, severely overcooling that return, you're going to have some problems, right? So I'm going to give you some tips on how to stop that. Um, but what we're also trying to do is keep that plenum pressure in check, right? Um, how many of you have seen um, a, a, a bypass humidifier or a powered humidifier on a zoning, on a plenum that's also got um, zoning and no bypass? You ever seen that? So what if half of that zone system shut down? What's the plenum pressure in there right now? What's the, on a bypass humidifier, and I don't care whose it is, okay? What brand, pick a brand. What's the, step, what's the uh, pressurization limit that a bypass humidifier can, can handle on that plenum? Anybody know? It's in the manuals, right? We don't ever read those things. It's in the, it, when you look at my uh, spec, you open up the spec sheet, same thing on brand X, and it'll tell you it's 0.3 static. That you, if you get above 0.3 static in a plenum on a bypass humidifier, it will blow the water off the pad, and then you'll think it's a bad humidifier and it's excessive plenum pressure. If you got a powered humidifier on that plenum and you're not managing the static pressure, half the system shuts down. If it gets to 0.4 static, it will, over, it, will over, it will overpower that humidifier, right? So you have to either bypass it, dump it, bleed it, or use an ESP on JD's system. However you're doing it, you gotta manage it. You cannot just put a system in and, and some people oversize ducts and do some tricky stuff and that's fine. As long as you take a magna helix at the end of the day and you shut half that system down and you look at what that pressure is. Because if you got a humidifier on it, you can't afford for it to get over those limits. Otherwise, you're gonna have another problem. Okay, everybody understand that? So, very overlooked. And, and our bypass, I'll go over it in more detail, but you notice it doesn't have a weight on it because we don't use those anymore, right? Those things were junk. If you ever used a weighted bypass, you probably, you know, hate them, hate them to this day. I had people throw them at me when I first came to Honeywell. I hated them so much. But um, this one is a static, is a constant static pressure damper. So our engineers actually have a coiled spring in there that's set up at 0.5 static out of the box shut. And if that, if that, uh, um, if you wanted to, if I put a, a power humidifier on a plenum before I even started it up, I can take, and it's got on there, it's got a, uh, it's got a, a pressure gauge on it. So I can actually set that below 0.3 or 0.4 before I even start up the system. And I already know I'm not gonna overpower it because as those dampers start to shut, that, that static builds up, that damper, uh, bypass damper realizes it, and it starts cracking open the, the bypass to let the air bleed through, so it always manages that static pressure constant. That's why it's called a constant static pressure damper, okay? And then there's some other tricks you can do to slow that fan speed down when you're all calling for one zone, and I'll explain what we want to get into the panels. But thermostats, panel kit, zone dampers, and some way to manage your static. Okay, everybody cool? All right, so let's look at our different panels. So we make four, right? And, and um, the first one is the HZ311, okay? So it doesn't stand for hillbilly zoning, JD. Okay, funny guy. We, we came out with them first, okay? <laughs> And, and you know, what, I'm not even gonna, gonna say anything. Um, the HZ31, we actually came out with this product in 2008. Yeah, it was 2007 or eight. It's been a while. Um, I just came to Honeywell when we switched over. I think it was 2000, might have been 2006 even. But um, what we was trying to do is eliminate the dip switches, right? So if you got a big old bank of dip switches and you're trying to set up a three heat, two cool heat pump, it's pain in the butt, you know? So we got rid of dip switches. We also got rid of 
staring at a printed circuit board. You know, because when you look at a furnace these days and you open it up and it's like a computer in there, it's kind of intimidating, right? So we wanted to hide all that stuff because you're never changing them, you're never testing them, right? It's a PCB, it either goes bad or it's good, right? So all that stuff's been hidden behind that, that uh, front cover on that thing. So you'll never see any of the stuff you never need to work on, okay? It's also uh, uh, push button terminals. So you don't have to have a screwdriver to install this thing. You just need to push your wire in, and it'll hold it for you. And then it's got a little press and release uh, part on the top. So that's Honeywell zoning, three zones. And I cannot expand that over three zones. Three zones, one heat, one cool, okay? So that means I can do a one heat, one cool furnace system just fine, okay? The HZ211 is Honeywell zoning, two zones, two heat, one cool, and that's a heat pump only board, okay? So that'll only do two zones, so that's a new construction special, right? It'll only work with heat pump stats because it's only a heat pump system. And, uh, and that's a low cost way to, to put two zone, a pan, run a panel with two zones on a, on a house that I really don't need a lot of bells and whistles in, okay? But when I get into these two daddies, the HZ322 is Honeywell zoning, three zones, two heat, two cool. So I can do a two heat, one cool heat pump, a two heat, two cool conventional, and really do a lot of my, my business off that one panel. I can expand it over three zones, but it's the first one that also has the digital setup. These are already pre-set up, right? And I've even got fixed high and low um, or high uh, temperature limits on there. So on a gas furnace, it's going to be 160 out of the box before it trips because your furnace is 180. So it's always going to be 20 degrees less than your furnace if something happens and it starts getting too hot. This is fixed at 140 because it's going to be always backed up with electric and your heat pump, you don't, you know, it's, it's not going to uh, get over 100. If it gets to 140, it's going to shut it off, right? So all those are preset. These, because we don't, we got, I can configure it to be a two heat, one cool, or one heat, one cool, a bunch of other uh, setups. It's all done on that screen by, uh, um, it's a question and answer session. So it'll ask you, am I heat pump or gas? Or heat pump or, or conventional? You pick whichever one you want. How many stages of heat? Excuse me. <coughs> How many stages of heat do I have? Um, all this, that, and the other. So all those are just questions, and, and then once you're done, you're done. You can be the only one on the job on checkout and not have to run to the third floor, turn the heat on on the thermostat to make sure the downstairs damper's closing. <coughs> it's got a checkout on there. So when you go to checkout, you can test the heat, the cool, the fan, um, your auxiliary heat if you're doing some kind of backup. And then I can also go and close damper one and stand there and watch it shut to make sure I've wired damper one to damper one, right? I can close damper two, look at damper two, which is right, they're usually right where that panel is. So you're not running all over the house. And if you check out here, you're not gonna get a call back, okay? Because uh, a lot of times, like, Dennis has to go out and take care of, you know, where the, the homeowner called in and there's a problem, we don't know what it is. He gets there and they didn't, um, you know, maybe the coolant wasn't, it was too cold to, uh, to, they put the stuff in in the middle of winter and couldn't charge it, you know. So, but some people just forget to do that, right? They forget to, to, to do the cooling side because, I mean, it, it just happens, right? We're human. So if you test out on our thermostats or use the test mode on this panel, it's going to ensure that you've got everything straightened up and you, and you, you can leave the job uh, with it being checked out. Now, that's the 322. Now, on the 322, there's a four, there's a ABCD terminal, and on here there's an ABCD terminal. What that is is if I ever want to run a wireless thermostat to it, so the the Red Link Vision Pros, you, you've probably all used one by now, right? Well, those can be hardwired, right, straight to the furnace, but they can also be wireless to my zone panel. So let's say I've zoned, uh, you know, I got three zones in a house and I was able to do all that in the basement, right, because the basement was not finished. I was able to add all my dampers. 
But now, how do I get wires up to those top floors, right? Because it's a finished house above the unfinished basement. So before wireless, you were finding creative ways of dragging wires up to the house, right? Well, now that Red Link's out, you can add a wireless adapter to the side of that panel, take that Red Link stat and stick it straight on the wall, push a button, and run no wires to those, those other zones, right? So that cuts the, the, the install time in half. So if you can get to the ductwork and see it, you, don't have, you could probably do that job in a half a day because you're not spending the other half of the day or more yanking wires up through the house. Is that cool? So the 432 is our top of the line panel. That will actually do four heat, two cool dual fuel, right? So if I got a two heat compressor, heat pump, two, two stage gas furnace, I can actually stage all four stages and not jump W1, W2, right? So that's a really nice thing. Um, it's the only panel we do that will do three heat, two cool geo, three heat, two cool heat pump with backup electric, it, but it's our only dual fuel panel. And I don't care who is your favorite zoning system, but when you zone a system and you're dual fueling, the zone panel is the dual fuel kit, not the thermostat, all right? So that outdoor sensor is tied to, the, to that zone panel, and the zone panel is determining when I'm gonna run the, the two stages of, of, of whatever through the compressor, or I'm gonna run it through the gas valve, okay? Not the thermostats. So if you set up a Honeywell thermostat that's dual fuel capable with an outdoor sensor, and you set it up as a heat pump stat and it's the dual fuel kit, and you do the same thing in the other zones, and you set the, the, the zone panel up the same way, you're gonna get a call back. It's gonna freak it out, right? Because that ain't how it's supposed to be set up. So you dual fuel, you set it, the, the zone panel up as dual fuel, and on our Honeywell thermostats, it asks you, is the thermostat a dual fuel kit or is there an external one? You'll choose external fossil fuel kit when you're doing zoning, okay? Everybody cool with that? Right, because it will be a problem and you may have already run into it. So I can do four zones, three heat, two cool, conventional, dual fuel, I can get four heat, two cool, because there is a W1, W2, and a Y1 and Y2 on there, okay? And uh, so that's our four panels. And uh, let's look at a couple of the features on it. So push-in terminals are one. Now, um, Dennis, was it you that was having issues reading the tent, reading? Uh, I never did get that answer for you, by the way. But these little copper terminals there, you're supposed to be able to get the tips of your terminal. There's little tips for it. And it goes in there, it reads the, the, the voltage there to make sure you got voltage. Um, you might want to, I guess, according to Dennis, you want to make sure you got you know, good, solid, uh, uh, perfect tips, not something you stuck in a socket and burnt the end up, right? Which is probably Dennis's deal. Because <laughs> if it's like mine, that's how mine are, so. Um, but they're copper little plates because it usually use the screw head on a normal panel, right? Um, then I've got uh, uh, um, a thermal uh, LED zone. So if I'm in stage one, I actually know I'm in stage one. It's like, a, it's like a drag racing tree, right? It's stage one, stage two. And I got my fan, so I know when my fan's on. Um, and and if, it's, if it's in a, a standby mode, it's, it's green. But if it's actually zoning, it's, or is it, no, standby mode's red. And if it's zoning, it's actually green. That tells you your panel's open and, you're, and, and that zone's calling. Uh, emergency heat and everything else is there. There's also a button right there that um, if you had thermostat issues and you need to force the panel into emergency heat, you can just hit that button and it'll, it'll disable everything and just run your gas furnace or whatever your backup heat is until that event's over, okay? Uh, the thermostats are still zoning. It's just you're doing it the, probably the most inefficient way. You know what I mean? Especially if you got backup electric, but Oh yeah, so um, he was asking if I push that button, does it does it just open all zones and heat? It's still zones like normal. It's just because there's something wrong with my heat pump. You know, if you didn't have zoning, you'd have to you tell the homeowner to go to emergency heat. Depending on which thermostat you use, you can do it by the stat, and it'll force it all into emergency heat. Uh, but if you got lower cost stats, you might have to just use the button at the panel. So that's what it is. It's just 
an override until you guys can get out there and make whatever repair was needed. You know what I'm talking about? So is that cool? Does that get it, Kyle? Kyle? So it's also got a um, thermal fuse protection for each zone. And what that means is, is um, anybody ever called the zoning hotline for Honeywell before? They're really, really good. And I've, I really tested them when I was a contractor because I put in zoning since the early 90s. But I, I, I did a bunch of uh, branch line zoning and I didn't get a retrofit damper. I just used regular ARDs. And those round dampers are about seven VA a piece. And I put like 50 of them on a panel. Or it wasn't that many, it was at least 25. And I blew the fuse right out of the side of that zone board. Cause you can overload those zones. You can't use but so much VA. So if you overload a zone, it don't blow the panel anymore and you don't have to go get a whole new panel. There's a thermal fuse in each zone. Just like a thermal fuse in your compressor, it gets hot, you gotta pour water on it, cool it back down so you can work on it again. That fuse does the same thing. So if you overheat it because you put too many VA into it, it'll, it'll, it'll open up and that zone will get hot or that zone will get cold. So the homeowner will call you and say, hey, my upstairs zone is going, is out of control. Well, then you'll know that that's the zone you need to go check on. And, and, and then the thermal fuse, you'll look at those, those uh, VA. And I'll show you how to stack, uh, uh, you know, how to calculate how much VA you're, you're, that is too much, right? And there's tricks about how to trick the panel into not seeing those, right? Uh, so I'll get into it when we get into the dampers. Um, variable speed blower control. All of our panels, even these, have a DSBK terminal on them. Okay, so if you've got a variable speed furnace, whether you're using a single stage or a multi-stage system, that DSBK terminal, you know how you have a dehum loop on your furnace, on your variable speeds or your air handlers? That is an active dehumidification loop. So if you tie it to a dehumidistat, it would actually uh, uh, slow the fan speed down 20% and get the coil cold again to pull more water out of the air. Okay, well, if you're not using that feature and you got zoning in, if you take that DSBK terminal, that dehum terminal from that variable speed uh, piece of equipment and tie it into my zone panel and only one zone is calling, it won't let the fan speed get over 80% in the cooling mode. So that gives you a little less airflow that you got to manage bypass wise. And if the second zone calls, then it'll, dry, it'll add that voltage back and bring the fan speed back to 100%. So that helps you manage that, especially with variable speed, it helps you manage that bypass a little more than, than, than just a normal standard fan unit. So that's what that, that's for. Um, <clears throat> and, and, it, and I don't know why they, they have it as a second bullet point, but it's the, this is a function of that. Runs the fan at low speed when single zone is calling, okay? And then, uh, and goes back to a high speed. Man, that just tells me, I already said all that. Um, so when we built this thing, we built it based on what the problems we run into as installers all the time, right? Like, how do I uh, mount this thing on the wall, you know, and this, that, and the other. You got a question? Uh, we do have a question online. Yep. Uh, Mark wants to know, is it open for a certain amount of time or till you turn it off, the damper? Is what open? The damper. What damper? Uh, or the, the thermal fuse. fuse? The thermal fuse. Yeah, it's got to cool down, so it's, uh, I'm not sure, it, it only takes like a few minutes once you take the power off of it, because it stays kind of hot while there's that load, right? So once you, un once you power it down, it takes a few minutes and then it'll, it'll, uh, it'll pop back into shape. I don't know exactly. So the thermostat wire is shorter, it's, it's usually a function of the damper. Um, It, 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 it probably will. I never had, I don't know the answer to that. So the question was, is that if I had to short my thermostat, does that, does that, uh, if, if that can, can uh, have an issue on the fuse, then it, then that'll open up instead of blow. Okay. Yep. So I assume then, is there a way to ohm that out? Like you could ohm out the thermal overload on a compressor? Could you do the same thing on that to confirm it? <clears throat> I'm sure it is, but I don't know what that number is, but our hotline would. Okay. Right. Could you repeat the question here? Yeah, so what he asked was, is, 
like if my compressor thermal overload goes on, I can throw my ohmmeter on there and figure that out. So uh, our hotline, it's it's 1-800-468-1502. It's our zoning hotline. I'll give it to you uh, too, and then uh, we'll put it on the, we'll type it out to people online. But those guys are, are really good, and they're there from eight to five, and they got all that nerdy stuff you need to know, which I'm not gonna have, yep. Um, I believe Mark was talking about the emergency heat button. So that it, the emergency heat button doesn't have anything to do with the dampers. So the dampers and the thermostats are gonna open and close as they need to heat that house. It's just gonna be um, in case my heat pump went out because my reversing valve messed up, I would have to tell that customer to go to Mercy Heat till I got there anyway. Y'all tell them that, right? I think he's asking how should you have to take it back off though once you fix the issue. Yeah, you'll go back to normal mode. Yeah, you can take it out of emergency heat mode. It's not automatic. And uh, Kevin wants to know, can you access the terminals remotely with the Thanks, wireless man. feature? Huh? Can you access the terminals uh, remotely with the wireless feature? Access the terminals remotely. As in get into the i guess get into the terminals without actually so if being i've got the a terminals. wireless thermal i think i let me make sure i might have to ask this guy <laughs> if i got a thermos a wireless thermostat on the wall that means i've got no wires physically going down to r c w i and g at let's say it's zone one okay so um at the at the checkout terminal at the that on that panel that's got this uh that window the there's a checkout. You can actually go and see which uh, um, wires are active on that call from that thermostat because there's no, there's no virtual way to do that. So we have all that for you. So if you're looking for, if, you, if the thermostat upstairs is calling for second stage and you got it in test mode locked into second stage and you go downstairs to my, that little window and only Y1 is showing up, then you know you got an issue with Y2, okay? And then it's the only, it's the only option for dual fuel on that HD four three two. Yes, that's the only option. It's the only dual fuel panel we own, so we if have. You, even if you were doing a new construction, you'd need a heat pump with a gas. Mask. You'd have to use that. Have to use that. Okay. Yes. And then w one more question. Uh, Lyndon wants to know: Do I wire the BSBK on a variable speed air handler instead of the G, the fan terminal? No. Well, that is he a train dealer? Uh, it sounds like it. Ask him. So he's either American Standard or trained to ask a question like that. <laughs> and the reason is because is a BK on a train unit is, there, is, is, is the uh, circuit for dehum. It doesn't actually say dehumidifier. It says, D, it says BK. And they actually use it um, on older 16 sear train units, American Standard units. The logic in that outdoor unit wasn't built to go to Y and Y low like their stats were. They fixed that since. So that that if it's a train or American Standard and they got that BK terminal sitting there, it's probably not being used. So you would cut your I think it's a W4 jumper on the on the train American Standard board that would uh, take the red and the, uh, the the internal jumper between red and dehum and move it to the board, right? So and you don't and and we internally jump red to DSBK on our panel, and we tell it when to open and close the voltage to slow the fan speed down or apply it to, to ramp it back up. So I hope I answered that. And then what he asked was, no matter if it's a one heat, one cool new construction, I still gotta buy the most expensive panel you got to dual fuel, the answer is yes. Cause it's still a lot cheaper than the way we used to dual fuel. You know, remember the shoe box that looked like spaghetti poured on it and it still never worked right those were the good old days right so having a thermostat to do it when you're not zoning and a zone panel to do it when you are is keeps you out of the furnace it does it's so much cleaner and easier um all right so how we mount this thing you notice i got a bunch of screw holes in this thing so if i've got just if i'm up in an attic now these can handle 160 degree temperatures they can also handle negative 40 degree temperatures because we sell them all over the U.S. and Canada, right? So we have to, you know, we're going to be in attics, okay? That, if I use just those two holes in the middle, that just think of a two by four in an attic, I can just mount it on that two by four. Or I can, or I can, you know, put it on a block wall, or I could put it on this, that, or the other. And the cool thing about this panel is we kind of, 
build it off the wall. So once it goes against the wall flat, you can still get uh, wires behind it. You're not, yank, you're not like, oh man, I wish I'd have brought those in over here. You could just scoot them in behind it and, and, and put them in. And then we make this to where it, if I wanted to bring them in from, cause I, I, I tell you what, I love zoning. And if you ever come over to my house and look at my zone panel, my panel comes off the wall and then the wires magically come in behind it and just literally come around into there. I love to make them look pretty, right? And uh, you can do that with this panel because you got the room to move your wires in there. You got these tie straps, right? So these are places where I'm trying to have some good wire management. So if I run a tie strap through that little eye right there, I can cinch all them wires down. And then these on the top have little wells on the back of them. So if I put my tie strap in there, it'll come back at me. And then I can tie those in and, and cinch those down. So I've got four, I got four on the side for the regular tie down. And then I got these down here that I can uh, manage that way. Then we got these little holes at the top. And when you close, put the, the, the lid back on, you've got a nice half inch conduit size uh, deal there. So if you mount that on your wall, and then you got a nice piece of conduit coming out of the ceiling, all your wires are nice and hit up above the drywall. And then I run them down through that wire and that really makes your job look really nice. And I could still pull the, just kind of uh, uh, cut that off right below that, that bottom lip or that lip there. And then when I close that up, it looks, it looks real professional, right? So you put in a few of these dentists, you like that? Those are some good features, right? So trying to do what we can do to make it easy to install, right? Yep, question. Gary just wanted to clear something up. Um, Gary Nichols, he wanted to ask if, um, if, it's, if you're able to provide cooling to one zone and heating to another zone using a heat pump system, or did he misunderstand something? No, you can, it doesn't matter how you're heating the house, but you can run cooling in one zone and heating in another. Now, it doesn't do it at the same time, right? Um, so if you're in a, let's say you're doing a little office building, right? And you know how the perimeters are always, uh, they're trying to run heat to the perimeter, but the middle, they may make, it may be a dentist office. They may be doing dentures in the middle and have uh, stuff that produces heat all winter long. So sometimes you need cooling in the middle of the building and heat on the perimeter. Well, if you zone that, you can run heat on the perimeter and cooling in the middle. It's just going to only let, let it run for a maximum time. So if if the majority of my stats, it's first come first serve, and the majority of the thermostats, if they're on heat, it's going to run that, and then um, they usually satisfy. Then the cooling guy is going to call for cooling, and it's and as long as you got a, um, you know the the proper stuff on your condenser, what they call that a low ambient control, then you're good to go, right? Or you might even have an economizer that does it, but that'll bring in uh, uh, cold air to that zone, and you got. 15, 20, or 30 minute timer that's anti-hog software is what we call it. So that keeps that one guy from locking it and cooling when the other people need perimeter. So it'll flip flop. And then that's why you want to have a nice bypass or dump zone because you want to reclaim that instead of dumping heat in a cooling zone or, or, or cooling in a heat zone. So that's what a good, a good uh, dump or bypass will do for you. So that's a great question. and. Um, and also a great feature of these panels. So, um, so that's how I can wire them in and mount that. A uh, bunch of different ways to mount it. Um, now, we, we, you can order these a couple different ways. You can order them with kits, right? Um, that We're going to give away a kit tonight. So when you order um, an HZ432 and it's got a K on the end of it, well, you're going to have the panel in the box. You're going to have a, a 40VA transformer, right? because a 40 VA transformer can generally want run about five of our dampers and, and that, that's plenty of, uh, of VA. Um, and then we also put, a, wherever that box is, a discharge air temperature sensor in it. And that's a very important thing to put in your system because that's going to keep it from overcooling and overheating and allow it to do some different things. And we're going to get into those. Um, and then if you buy the kit, you're just adding your dampers and your thermostats, okay? Um, this is a real uh, 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 panel, right? So 
if you go to different manufacturers, you know how they have those highly accelerated life test stuff? Well, that's ours. And it, it was actually 210 degree oven and it was wired and actually turning dampers on and off after 210 degrees. It looked like that, but it was still running. So it, we have to build these things really tough. You know, it's, these things are gonna be running. I mean, you've seen zone systems. Some of them have been in 20 years and still running. So they're, they're, they're pretty tough animals. Um, and, and we build them to be reliable because, you know, they're gonna be in, they're gonna be where it's moist and damp and hot and sticky, you never know, right? Um, you can use just about any thermostat out there. Um, uh, hopefully they're mine. Um, but this is what you really got to pay attention to. And we, we can give you a copy of this presentation too so you can have all these little cheat sheets. But this is probably the one I get asked the most is the rep. How many dampers can I use and what's going on here? So if I take a 40 VA transformer, I can put a maximum of four of our regular ARD ZDs, and I'll explain what those are, round and square, okay, um, per zone and only five max per panel. But, it, but our panels can take a, a, a bigger uh, transformer. So if I put a 75 VA transformer in there, I can expand that up to 11 zones, or 11 dampers per panel, four dampers max per zone. I could also go up to 100, 110, 120 VA transformer. I wouldn't want to go much more than that, okay? If you're gonna, um, on our retrofit round dampers, those are the ones that slide into duct that's already there, right? And they're uh, only 2.5 VA because they're power open, power closed, where our, our standard dampers are uh, power closed, spring open, okay? And they're seven VA. So uh, you got to make sure you're using this chart when you're, when you're loading that up. Now, if you're like me and I took a bunch of ARDs, right, on that job where I blew the panel up. So what you can do is on our panel, we have um, a power open, power close, and a common terminal. And we call that M6, M1, and M4, okay? And I, I, got, a, I got a slide that shows it. But um, that... One means common, M1 means common, M4 means open. There's four letters in the word open, and that's where they came up with that. There's six letters in the word closed, that's why it's M6. So if you pull our damper out of the box and it's open, then you need to go M6 and M1 to, to power that shut. If it's our ventilation damper, they power, they, they have to open up, they have to power open and, and they, is that, yeah, they, it's opposite, because it's a normally closed damper. So a normally closed damper would be M4 and M1. So, uh, but if you're, uh, you'll never use that on this zone panel. What, the, what all three of them are on is like if you go on a job and they've got 24 volt dampers and there's nothing wrong with it, they just want a, a new panel and they're power open, power closed dampers, you don't have to take them out of there. As long as they're good, you can tie them straight into my board. So my board will use two wire dampers and three wire dampers, okay? You just need to make sure what the VA rating is. So if I had um, 10 Honeywell dampers, how many VA have I got? 10 times seven. That's right, 10 times seven, that's it. I gotta have bigger than a 40 VA. And I probably wouldn't wanna go bigger than 75, being that close, I might throw 100 on it. Just make sure you're not more zones than you're supposed to be and make sure that or more per zone that you're supposed to be make sure you don't go over that limit okay I would assume that the engineers mathematically already worked all that out so if you follow that you should follow that you're in you're in good shape you're a good man yeah. I know your boss so he's training you well all right so that that's a good thing to have right there all right so uh, I'll go through the panels one at a time before we get to the dampers so the 211, remember it's a new construction special or it could be retrofit, but it is non-expandable. It can only be two zones and it can only be a two eat, one cool heat pump. No dual fuel or nothing, okay? It's just a standard, uh, already configured uh, panel for, for those jobs. For your one heat, one cool, you know, uh, this is a very inexpensive panel. Um, still powerful, still has 
both of those still have the DSBK. So there are some systems that four wire, you know, conventional stats and the board does all the staging. So uh, you can use these with them. Um, then, then I get into the 322. That's going to be uh, my more advanced systems where I've got multi-stage furnace, multi-stage outdoor conventional unit. You know, it's usually two, two heat, two cool conventional uh, and two heat, one cool heat pump. You got a question? Yeah, just um, <clears throat> Pat wants to know, what's the VA draw for the thermostats? What's the VA use of the stats has been all? Stats don't use hardly any, <clears throat> any power at all. They're, stats are just a switch. The, if it's a bad, if it's a, uh, they'll use the 24 volts coming out of the system, but I think in the spec there is a small VA, but it's very little. You know, it's not much at all. Um, the VA rating is strictly for the, um, the thermostats using, if, if you're in zoning, the thermostat comes off of the same transformer that the damper's running off of. So you're all, never uh, power the, the zone panel from the system transformer. Always use a separate transformer, okay? Uh, because you're, uh, you, you know, that needs to be, that's running the equipment and doing other stuff. And your dampers really need that extra. So, I mean, there's plenty of VA for the panel and the thermostats and the dampers with a 40 or whatever. You just need to be concerned about stacking up the VA, the damper, because that's when you can get into some overload on the panel. But all of our stats, all of our competitor stats, I've never had a thermostat over VA a panel. But it's a great question because, you know, you got to think about all these things, right? Um, uh, intuitive, uh, the, you get into HZ322 and you got that menu set up and that's the, the, the one you can start to do. Uh, you can uh, put the wireless adapter on there and be wireless to our thermostats. 432, that's our dual fuel panel. That's our four zone panel. It's the only panel that we can exp expand past four zones with an expansion kit. Um, and, uh, and it's really the best, the best panel we make. So if you add expansion kits, you can go up to 32 zones. Okay, but that's, I mean, you got a real crazy commercial job you're doing that, right? Um, residential, what's the sweet spot, Dennis? Three or less, you know? So we can do four with that panel, and we can do four wireless, okay? But if you do four wireless, because you got that adapter tied into there, that can't be expanded past four zones, okay? So if you got eight zones in a building, but you want to use wireless stats, well, you'd have to take this panel, put the expansion panel next to it. You know our Red Link stats that have the EIM and you got the, the Red Link Vision Pro? Well, you would hardwire the EIM into the zone panel and wirelessly connect each EIM to the stat remotely if you're going past four zones to do that. Okay, yes, sir. A question from Constantino. Hey, Constantino, what's up, man? Uh, he wants to know, how do you connect two panels to expand to more zones? So you, you, there, you <coughs> buy uh, what we call a TAZ-4 expansion panel, and right here it says add a zone, and it says add a zone AZ-1 and 2. You take those two wires over to the expansion panel, and that's the communication bus between them. Very good question, Constantino but it's very simple to do, okay? And then you tell the other panel that these are one through four, these are four through eight, the next expansion panel will be whatever that math is, because I'm from Tennessee. Transformer for the other panel? Or? Yes, transformer for the other panel, right? And, and, and you'll just put another 40 VA on there, So if that, and that, which is even better, because I would have had to go up on it anyway if I was using the same one. So I could have a 40 V on this one, it's gonna do four zones. Do 40 V on this one, I got plenty of power. So it's actually better when you do it like that. But just don't use a system transformer, right? I've seen people do it, and they always have to go back and fix it, okay? All right. So um, uh, the question was, is do these have issues or do these cause issues with these new DC inverter type heating and air systems? Well, it all depends, right? So um, you always should go to your manufacturer and ask them do they approve zoning with this panel or approve zoning with that furnace. Some people don't approve zoning with their equipment, right? 
there's a um, if they're come out of community, you're probably using the thermostat that comes with that system, you, and that's all you use. And they probably have their own communicating zoning system. What is there a specific brand? Yeah, you know, you just have to, there was a Johnson Controls, uh, what they do, York? Uh, back in the, back about 10 years ago, there was a York furnace that was variable speed that you could not zone it. It, it wouldn't, push the, the, it would, it would just, wouldn't push the air to the top floor. They actually had to put a switch in there for when you zone it, and it actually defeatures the furnace. So it's always a good, uh, a good practice to make sure that the equipment you sell allows zoning on it most do right there's a there's an oddball like that Bosch and actually I had a rep tell me that the other day but they weren't talking about zoning they were talking about Wi-Fi stats in it so I wouldn't be wanting to put a piece of equipment on the market that didn't use a Wi-Fi stat that's just dumb okay because people are buying Wi-Fi stats and, and and you need to have a piece of equipment so they'll fix that that's a board issue because if their boards telling it when to ramp up and down and then my thermostat well the thermostat doesn't really tell the board anything other than it's in stage one or two you know right but the problem isn't the isn't the thermostat the problem is the equipment okay yep uh, i got a question from mark again wants to know um what if what if your transformer is oversized and can handle the panel and then some? Is it it's not going to fry the board, right? No. If you put a hundred VA transformer on because that's all you got on the van, it's fine. You got plenty of power. Okay. It's only going to use what it needs, right? All right. So let's move into our dampers here. So we have a couple different uh, dampers that we choose. Now none of the dampers I'm going to show you except for the one on the bottom. Or for a commercial, okay? <clears throat> you got another question? Um, yeah, I think I'm. I think I know the answer. You, um, I got a question. Can I set up different temperatures for each zone because different tenants perceive differently? That's the beauty of zoning, isn't it? Yep. Right. So, uh, and he said keyword tenant, which means that there's one system and the four people are sharing it. Let's just say, right? If you didn't have zoning, you'd have mad people, right? <laughs> so I've seen, I've had guys call me up and say, can I put a red link stat in my room and have sensors in the others? No, that's not zoning. That's averaging. Somebody's not going to be happy, okay? Um, so yeah, the as long as there's a thermostat and there's a damper and it's properly ducted in and zoned, you should not be able to tell what the other person's doing, okay? So now we got dampers and we got to choose them. So our ARDs mean automatic round damper. The ZD is just zone damper, which is just our word for rectangle square duct, okay? The RRD is retrofit round damper and the MRD is modulating automatic round damper. And we use that for some commercial bypass, okay? Now, these are residential systems, okay? That means they're only gonna be able to handle five tons of airflow or less. They will not run on a seven and a half ton package unit, okay? You have to move into a commercial damper and we make commercial dampers, okay? But that's, um, well, we don't anymore. That's the commercial Honeywell, okay? But you can tie those into my panel. But anything that's five, that's 2000 CFM and below, these are fine, okay? We have our ARD round. We have the, the ZD square and we've got the EARD, which is our normally closed ventilation damper, okay? Now, you can take, in the past, you used to be able to take a regular round six inch Honeywell damper and convert it to normally closed uh, for ventilation just by taking the motor off, shutting the damper, putting the motor on the other side. You can still do this even though we changed the motor, um, but it's because uh, our old actuators were just a a steel box right and it had a big old screw on it that told you if it was open or closed and if it was in an attic it was probably burnt up 
because it got hung up in the insulation, right, and stuff like that. So um, we got away from all that. Um, and if you move that the new actuator to the other side, it'll still work, but it but it now there's open and closed on there, and that'll be backwards. So you, if you're doing um, uh, ventilation, you want to get the proper actuator. So let's go over those real quick. So our old Honeywell uh, actuators were that way for a long, long, long 30 years or so, right? That big old screw there would tell you if it was open or closed. And, it, and, and if the damper was mounted in another direction, you'd never see it. I mean, it was just not that great, right? Um, if you wanted to set the, the range stops so it would bleed through, it was a bunch of wing nuts back there and it was a big mess. You couldn't never see what the position the damper was actually in. You were kind of just praying, right? So the new damper solves all that stuff. And let me go through it one at a time. Um, and I just told you all that. So the new one, I've got push button terminals for my wires on the, on the, on these two, on this actuator, I'm only going to use the M6 and M1 because they're, they're spring open power closed, right? The thing I like about spring open power closed dampers, when I was a service tech, if somebody called me and said, my, my zone two is overheating, then I know that that zone's bad. I know which one went off on thermal overload. Well, I know which ones, uh, you know, it would fa they fail open is what I'm trying to say, right? So you always know which one's a runaway zone. And when I get to the job, I go straight to it. This here is how you set the range stop. So I've got zero, one, two, or three, and I get 17, 30, or 50% bleed through when I set those. So it's, it's, it's brainless. This uh, uh, has a, is, a, is a tape uh, lip. So um, from the duct to the bottom of that tape lip is exactly the height of what the insulation code is now. So you know it's a lot thicker on insul what is it like it's almost two inches or something right of insulation that's got to go what is it r8 is that right i uh, just been a minute for me so um your insulation will tuck right up under that and then that's a paint paint grip type of a plastic so tape will stick to it and you can vapor seal it looks like that thing's growing right out of the duct it's really nice and then the set screw is uh is is, sm is really really small instead of that big long set screw so it's not going to get uh, jammed up in your insulation. So when you're doing a two-wire configuration, I go M1 to common, M6 to normally closed at my panel, and then I will get a closed LED. So if it's a, I still have an open and closed indicator on the on the front of it, but it but it also has a, a closed light. So if that damper shut, I can be in a dark uh, basement and see that my damper shut. If you want the green light because there's a, an open light too, then you take a third wire from the zone panel and you, and you wire it into zone, to M4, and that'll give the extra 24 volts it needs to run the other LED light, okay? It's just power. That's all it's there for. So that'll give you both lights. And that, yep, so setting the bleed through, if I set number one, I'll get 17, it'll close and let 17% of the airflow go through, okay, between open and shut. Um, I get 30% bleed if I set it on two and 50% bleed if it's set on um, three, okay? So it's not like, that's not, that doesn't mean open, that means it's halfway shutting off the airflow, yep. So if you've sized your duct right and you have your either a bypass or a should never have, if you got a bypass, should never have to use that, right? This is there for, let's say, the builder who always gives you enough room, right, Dennis? Right? You can put all that in that little closet, and you know, the, can't do that. Just no physical way to get a bypass in. That's your only option. You know, you got to let it bleed or, you know, have some other way of doing it, right? So that's what they're there for. They're there in case you need it. Like I said, I don't care how you manage your static, but manage your static. Okay, it's the most important thing you do setting up a zone system. Okay, um, and that's what those those are for is to to let them bleed if you need to, and sometimes even a even a, a system you didn't put in and they've got a bypass in there, 
sometimes they may have undersized it and instead of going and you know reducting a bunch of stuff you could just let a couple bleed and get your static down and and solve the problem that way so that's just something to think about and then where would i dump it if i was going to do that well you know those two-story foyers and then you got the the vent right there at the top those are nice places to to put some stuff because nobody ever feels that right there but i'm not the biggest fan of dump zone but i i've used i've had to do it before right so uh good question on the bleed through but that's how you do it it's one two or three it's it's really simple okay and then i don't have that super long set screw anymore it's really small and uh, that way i'm not jamming up and getting caught in insulation and all that stuff um, now if you uh, uh, do service and you see a bunch of zone systems out in the market um, you might need to replace an actuator one day well um, the new actuators are exact uh, fit on the old actuator so the same key and the same hole in that dam damper it fits right on there so you can upgrade the old damper to a new damper because I mean usually the damper is good the thing that goes bad is usually the motor so um, you're able to do an easy swap over but that's only Honeywell to Honeywell right because it's got to have our the way we we key it in retrofit round dampers um, just before you use that type of damper make sure it's good quality duct you know what I mean because there's some bad round duct that makes it into the market and you could breathe on it and it dents it and and if the, these dampers are using the duct as the damper you know and when we make a round damper it's spiral duct it's I can stand on it and ain't gonna it ain't gonna crush it right so um, this could be anything so make sure it's a good duct um, and then you can just open up a slot and slide it in there and and it turns that damper into an actuator um, and that they're, they're 2.5 VA so you can use a bunch of them on a panel and then the MARD if you're gonna do some commercial jobs and you can and you can use uh, you can buy this to do branch line zoning they come in a bunch of different sizes uh, but they're power open power closed and that motor on there is just the workhorse of all commercial motors that thing it's modulating it's tough it'll last for 100 years you know it's built really 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 tough we use them on commercial jobs for uh for open and close dampers just to open and close but you can also hook them to commercial stats that do uh, modulating and stuff like that um, you can also put a static pressure controller that we make that that you put on the duct you, it, it has a, a, a static pressure gauge dial and you dial in your pressure and, it, and if that pressure gets to that point it'll modulate that damper open and close to, to, to bypass that through. So that's usually on, on light commercial stuff where you're going to see that. Now on residential this is what we use when you're going to use a bypass damper to dump it in your system. Okay, so. You know, I, I don't I don't like to go directly into the return because I'm coming out of the supply and sometimes you can't help it. But if you've got a full basement down there and you can take that supply and run it down the return, that, that bypass down the return a bit more so I can mix that colder plenum temperature with that 70 degree air coming out of the house, that's a lot better of a practice, okay? Um, but we do build some stuff into our panels to eliminate a lot of that problem okay um, like because I got two-stage furnace right um, if you're two degree if you're 10 degrees away from tripping the limit on our panel it'll downshift to stage one and before it shuts it completely down and use some of that free uh, try to cool it down that way okay so um, but a good good installed bypass you should never be able to tell that it's there right um, and I'm gonna show you how to size them properly because that's that's 90 percent of it and the other part is where you place the thing right but you want to come out of the out of the supply back in the return and I'm going to show you how to um, how to uh, um, size those properly um, you can also bypass to a dump zone so that's totally contractors choice design choice usually uh, uh, it's job driven right so but you can do that, right? And it's there for you. But what this thing is, 
is a very well thought out control. So it's a, it's a constant static pressure or pressure regulating damper. And um, it, uh, no matter what your blower speed is, it works extremely well with variable speed because variable speeds need to react fast. This is very fast, so you'll never have that deal where you don't have sand in the shovel. It's always gonna give you constant pressure so you're not gonna be hunting for air with that variable speed with this system here at all. So how this thing is set up, I don't need to use weights. Um, first of all, I gotta size my bypass damper. And um, so I, I need to first figure out what's the total system CFM, right? So think of that like this is a big old piece of pie, right? And I gotta carve this house up into different size pieces of pie based on the CFM they need. So let's do this one here. Let's just use a 2000 CFM system, which is what? It's a five ton, okay? And my smallest zone is 600. You're gonna take your 2000 CFM, you're gonna subtract your smallest zone, and what's left over is the bypass CFM, okay? Then we have four different sizes. That says I need to bypass 1400 CFM because that 600 CFM zone could be the only thing calling right now, okay? What am I gonna do with the rest of that air? Well, I gotta, I gotta bypass it. So you would use a 12 inch damper for that. Now, that doesn't make a lot of sense if you used to use your, your duculator, right? You'd be like 12, 600 CFM, that's only, that's only 10, ain't it, right? It, is that right? Or is it 14? It, it, you would think it would be 14 inch on, on something like that. Or no, it's 1400 CFM. That could be a 14 inch pipe if I'm doing regular point one static, but that's only when you're uh, running off the top of the furnace. That's your supply duct uh, static. Your bypass always has to be 0.25 static, or excuse me, 0.5 static pressure to give pressure back on the back side. So these are already figured at 0.5 static, okay? So this here, it will tell you that I only need a 12 inch damper on that bypass, even, even though it's 1400 CFM. And that will open as it needs to all the way or a little bit, depending on the pressure that builds up in that, in that plenum, okay? And wherever you set that on that dial is what it's, it's gonna make it more or less aggressive to open and close, okay? That that's that's for something else. Okay, this is this is I got to I got to bypass. I'm using a bypass damper, and I've got to uh, I've got to figure out which size to use. You don't roll the dice and figure. Oh, I'm using that one today. You have to actually have to do the math. Okay, because if you oversize or undersize a bypass, you're going to have issues. Okay. So let's do another one. If uh, if I had a if I had a four ton and my smallest zone was 800, what's my bypass need to be? What size bypass would I use? I'd use a 10, right? Because 10 will handle from 600 to 1000 CFM. So you could oversize them and it sucks for a couple different reasons. One, it's going to not run right. And two, I need, I got, I didn't have enough room in there anyway. And now I'm run an oversized duct for a bypass, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So always use our, our sizing uh, uh, to do that. Then you're gonna uh, set it up. So this thing has a little, it's like a chalk box, right? So when you open it up, you can ramp it up or ramp it down and then you got your dial gauge on there that's telling you what static you're setting it up at. Check it with your pressure, with your magna helix and it's, it's gonna be right on the money. I mean, that thing is very accurate. Then I need to have a discharge air sensor installed. And you don't slam that thing right over the top of the furnace, right? Like here's my furnace, here's my coil, there's my discharge sensor, don't do that. Cause it's always gonna be super hot coming out of the top of that and you're gonna trip it prematurely. So what you wanna do is try to put that thing the top of the plenum or if you, and, and we recommend that when you put our dampers in that you're at least a foot off of those, off of the plenum 
and you got a little bit of duck before you uh, uh, have it opened up, that's a good place for that discharge sensor too. So either at the top of that plenum or slightly off to the left or right of your first duck run, that way I'm not tripping that uh, system prematurely because it's going to be torrid in that plenum. So you don't want to put it like real low on there, okay? Um, so uh, just like this shows here, um, I want to put, um, uh, I don't know why that's there because it does not go in the return, okay? It's going to go in the supply. If it was a downflow, that would be a supply, right? But um, I want to put it off to the side of one of those first runs coming off that plenum if I can get away with it. But if they're slammed up on there, you can just go to the top of it. You just don't want to be right there. Okay, everybody knows what I'm talking about, right? Um, all right, so I actually have a video we're going to watch. It's about seven minutes, okay? So uh, uh, just, you guys ready? The Honeywell True Zone Damper is a direct replacement for today's legacy dampers. An installation has been designed with the technician in mind. This overview video will take you through the four installation steps. Hardware, wiring, configuration, and checkout. Complete installation guides are available at forwardthinking.honeywell.com. Before starting the installation, make sure you've selected the proper size for the job. True Zone dampers are available in over 130 sizes, making it easy to meet nearly all application needs. When ordering a square damper, note that the motor is mounted on the second dimension. There are several types of True Zone dampers. Each has a unique installation procedure, but all share the same actuator. For all True Zone dampers, be sure to position the actuator in an accessible place for wiring and servicing. For an automatic round damper, or ARD, insert the crimped end of the damper into the round ductwork. For a zoning damper, or ZD, slide the damper into the rectangular rigid duct and secure with screws. For an ARD damper with flex duct, mount it by attaching the flex duct over each side. Then slide the insulation under the actuator and use the taping flange for a proper seal. To install the zoning panel, select the proper location and mount the zoning panel on a 2x4 wall or the return air duct. The True Zone panel requires a transformer of at least 40 VA, but you can install higher VA transformers if needed. This dedicated transformer should be used to provide constant power to the True Zone panel. Install and wire the discharge air temperature sensor in your supply duct. Next, install the bypass damper between the supply and return ductwork, making sure the arrow is pointing in the direction of the airflow. Then, install your thermostats. You can use standard wired thermostats or you can use Honeywell Red Link thermostats by combining an 8Z432 or 8Z332 True Zone panel with a wireless zoning adapter. Now that you have all the hardware selected and installed, it's time to move on to the wiring. Start by wiring your dampers to their corresponding zones on the True Zone panel. The True Zone dampers operate on two wires, wire M1 and M6 to the corresponding zone on the True Zone panel. Use the optional M4 terminals to enable the green open LEDs. For access, simply break off the plastic tab. Next, connect the thermostats to the corresponding zone on the True Zone panel using a wired thermostat or a wireless zoning adapter and a Honeywell RedLink thermostat. For wired thermostats, simply wire to the corresponding zone on the True Zone panel. For red link thermostats, mount and wire the wireless True Zone adapter to the True Zone panel, simply wiring ABCD to ABCD. Once the thermostats are installed, you can move on to configuration. No configuration is necessary if you're using the 8Z221 or 8Z311. Everything is pre-programmed for you. On your 8Z432 or 8Z322 True Zone panel, begin configuration by clicking Mode. The zoning panel will walk you through the configuration based on your system. 
you'll be prompted to select basic configurations such as the one shown. In most cases, that's all that's needed. However, TrueZone also offers advanced setup should you need to change the default settings. You can use the advanced setup to adjust the purge settings, enable or disable the discharge air temperature sensor, configure the multi-stage outdoor temperature lockout, and more. Get the complete list by referencing the configuration demo in the zoning section at forwardthinking.honeywell.com. It's time to configure the thermostats. If you're using a wired thermostat, complete the setup as if you were configuring a non-zoned home. If you're using a red link thermostat, push the button on the zone panel until the wireless LED lights up. This opens enrollment for all your red link devices. The green LED will flash on the red link adapter. That lets you know devices are ready to be enrolled in the system. At the thermostat, select the proper zone and name the thermostat. Hit connect to enroll the thermostat to the zone panel. Repeat these steps for all remaining red link thermostats in the home and any red link accessories, including an outdoor sensor, internet gateway, or portable comfort control. Go to the zone panel and exit red link setup by hitting the mode button. Your devices are now enrolled and thermostat configuration is then complete. To configure the bypass, turn the system on and call for all zones to be open. Check the bypass to make sure it is fully closed and not bypassing any air. Call for the smallest zone in the home and check to be sure that the damper opens. Then go to that zone to ensure the noise level is acceptable. If so, you're done. If not, go back and dial down the pressure until the noise is at an acceptable level. Now it's time to perform a final check to ensure that everything is functioning properly, including the operation of the fan, system, heat or cool, and opening and closing the dampers. On the HZ432 and HZ322 panels, press the mode button until the checkout LED lights up. This enables you to turn the HVAC equipment, heating, cooling and fan on and off, as well as open and close the dampers for each zone. This is also a good time to do one last check on all thermostat wiring to ensure proper installation. With the system operating as it should, you've now successfully installed your Honeywell TrueZone system. For more information about TrueZone dampers and other Honeywell zoning solutions, visit forwardthinking.honeywell.com. Got questions? Is that a cool video or what? Kind of really helps you understand i mean this is not if you can wire up r c w y and g you should have no problem wiring up our panels it just gets kind of weird on zoning right because you got you just got to make sure your wires are labeled really really well right because i guarantee you, you want to piss dennis off send him to a job where he's got a bunch of wires and they're not labeled never never happens right it's not fun you got a question yeah this is actually a non zoning question oh cool what you got <laughs> um in non-zoning people will use a float switch to either kill the power to a thermostat or the condenser contactor by cutting yellow what does honeywell recommend with adding float switches so that's just what whatever you normally do in your area right i mean different people uh, protect their system in different ways i definitely if i got a drain pan i want a float switch in it so we usually break the red where we're at because we have 90% furnaces and air conditioners. So if I only broke the yellow, my 90% furnace would flood my house. So if you got uh, things that produce water year round, you probably want to maybe not break the yellow. So he sounds like he might be in a cooling only type of area or somebody that's using heat pumps, backup electric or something like that. Um, now you can also uh, have that float switch in there to shut the system down, but if you don't have a good thermostat that's telling you that uh, that you're losing your heating and cooling, you can all, you can take one of our Wi-Fi uh, water leak detectors and put in the drain pan. That way, it'll email that homeowner or text them that their drain pan's full of water and they're not going to have any air when they get home. So, uh, at a minimum, do that. But put put in your float switch. But that you're going to put in a float switch whether you got a zone system or not. Okay. 
Uh, and then there was a quick question. That video we just saw, is yes. that available it's on Forward, forward? Thinking? Yes. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we're going to send you a copy of this and uh, we'll put a link in the in there for you as well. Okay. But if you go to forwardthinking.honeywell.com, all that information in that video is on that website. Um, so I'm going to recap some of the stuff on wireless and we're going to get out of here after, after some questions. But if you want to go wireless, okay, now this is for retrofit or new construction because you run wires in new construction but drywallers come in there and can cover up your wires and then what are you going to do right so if i ever need to make the panel wireless i add that adapter and then i go into my other zone and i can be wireless to those zones i can also if i've got at least two wires at the wall i can power my prestige thermostat the little two wire uh, part of it and and it can be wireless to that zone adapter okay so I don't need the EIM now it's not going to give me all the features that the equipment module has but it is going to allow me to power that prestige up and then wirelessly transfer all the data just like I would with this one okay it's just because it's a color touchscreen it needs that 24 volt power to operate the Vision Pros can run off solely batteries. Yep. Uh, more question, how many devices, how many Redlink devices can be, uh, can that module handle? The wire, the EIM? It can handle four wireless thermostats. So if you're going to do wireless thermostats, it can handle the four wireless stats and the wireless outdoor sensor tied to it. It can handle more than that, but that's all you can really tie to it. Okay. Um, now, here's a cool thing. If I want to go the internet with that, those are four, let's say I had four wireless thermostats on here. A gateway can handle four red link thermostats, right? But if I got a gateway in a house to run all this to the internet, what I need, am I only going to use one channel of that gateway or three of them? These are, all these stats are tied to that wireless adapter, okay? So because of that, I only need one of the channels from the gateway to run to operate three thermostats. Okay, I've got uh, a, a Red Link um, uh, zoning at my house. I've got three wireless stats in my house because I didn't want to um, pull a wire. You know, my wire was all jacked up on the main floor. So I'm gonna when I log into my house. You're going to see, and, I, and I'll get to the camera here so you can see what I got going on. But there's my kids' rooms, my main rooms, and my main floor all, all there, okay? Those are all wireless. I've got a gateway in there, but I'm only using one gateway, okay? And the reason that my downstairs is colder than my upstairs is because I'm trying to dehumidify my house right now. So I got my downstairs... Uh, running two degrees cooler than my upstairs and I'm still only got 59% humidity, right? Which is okay, but I'd like to see it a little lower, but it's 86% humidity outside right now, right? So in my house sitting the tightest in the world. So if I needed to call Kyle over, he would sell me a what? A dehumidifier, right? So, but that zoning really, really helps. So if I didn't have that in there, my upstairs would be 78 right now. My downstairs would be uh, in the low 70s. It'd be it'd be terrible. And JD lives in the same neighborhood, same problem. Had to zone his house too. And and when you get into retrofit, instead of yanking wires up to all those floors, that's what that red link it makes it just so much nicer uh, to put in. You got Gary, a is there is there an adapter um, if you have more than four thermostats? So EIM. if you have more than four zones and you had like eight zones or six zones, you know the equipment interface module that we have with our uh, gate that we use with Prestige or if you want to be wireless to the, the 8000, you'd have to hardwire one of the EIMs into each zone and have its own thermostat. But if you do that and you put a gateway in, you'd need uh, two gateways because you, you, that's all four channels now that you're eating up. So you'd have, you'd have to have six channels. You'd have to have two gateways. So 
yeah, this will do, if I put the adapter in there, I can only go to four zones. I can't expand out of it. If I've got, if I need to hardwire a bunch of, if I need more than four zones, I use the adapter. I can do wireless, but I gotta do, I gotta spend a little more money, okay? So, uh, red link device is the true zone. If I hook that, 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 uh, that system up, the outdoor sensor will hook to it. The portable comfort control can hook to it, but the indoor sensors and the wireless outdoor module will not work with the zoning today, okay? Um, I also cannot use any of these when I'm, when I'm wirelessly connected to my zone panel with that module, okay? But there is a way to do that. So the EIM, what we were talking about just a minute ago, is the inter equipment interface module that has two convenience terminals for the thermostat, okay? It's also got all the RC, RH, Y1, Y2, AUX1, AUX2, all the things you need. And you would actually hardwire that into zone one and put the wireless thermostat upstairs uh, for the main part of the zone. And now I can run a humidifier, a dehumidifier, a ventilator through that EIM hardwired into zone one wireless to my upstairs system. Okay. So now I can tie all that stuff and have it managed from one location in my house. Dead easy to do. Okay totally wireless between the upstairs or if I got a prestige I can uh, use two of the good wires okay so that really uh, uh, manages and you're only running two wires from each of those IQ devices so it's not like you got to set up a bunch of current sensing relay junk we can force the fan on with a call for humidity through our boards in these equipment because we we allow that to happen so I'm not shutting down zones and when you do uh, zoning and you're doing humidifiers, you might want to look at Honeywell humidifiers because we have a board on our humidifiers that has a relay already built in. So when I'm wiring in this humidifier, I'm going to wire it in between there and here only, only to turn, tell it to turn on and off. The green wire coming from my furnace, I'm going to take the G wire and I'm going to go to G, uh, G, uh, F, that stands for green furnace, and that's on that board of that humidifier. The green wire coming from the panel, I'm going to run to green, G, T, which stands for green thermostat. Well, this is my thermostat, believe it or not. That's all my relays. So I want to be downstream. I don't want to force the fan on with a call for humidity at the stat. I want to make it a humidistat only, and my, my furnace can force the fan on with a call for humidity. So when I'm at rest on my zones, zone one isn't uh, shutting down zones two and three because there's a call for the fan. So we, we have a relay already built into our furnace to, to break the fan on this side of that panel so all those dampers will open and close like they're supposed to. And when they're at rest, deliver humidified air or dehumidified air or ventilation to those zones. And if you got any questions about that, call JD. He'll get a hold of me. I'll talk to you on the phone and we'll go over it one on one, okay? Um, then, if I want to, um, to use, a, if I put an EIM and I hardwired in and I want to add some wireless sensors, I can do that because the EIM will support the wireless sensors, but it's only in the zone that that thermostat's in. It's not to not buy thermostats in other zones. You're going to have to do that with my panel. Any questions? Yes. Um, I may just be really off base on this because I know it's not the intent for it. What you got? Could you use like the whole house ventilator, like a life breath or something like that, as a roundabout way of bypassing if you had? To? No. Can you use a? Can you a bypass? A bypass damper is a bypass damper. A ventilator is a ventilator. Right. Okay. That that's never good because. When you're bringing in fresh air, especially an ERV, that's balanced ventilation. Mm -hmm. So you're coming out of the return, back in the return. You're pulling out air from outside and you're putting air inside. If you're gonna, if you have to be very, 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 very careful. I had a water bottle somewhere. It's back there. Can you grab this? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, 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 I'm coming back. Yeah. Why you, why you, when you put a ventilator in, 
you want to if you're bringing in a dentist and uh you want to know about it ask this guy one day because we've been going through hell with ervs and getting them balanced but you've been in the house in the middle of winter and uh smoke's rolling out of the chimney coming into the house mm -hmm. anybody ever seen that you know the chimney's not 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 working right the smoke's rolling out into the house well that's because I'm sucking a lot of air out. I got a spray foamed house and I'm not making that air up. Mm -hmm. So that pulls the house into a negative. A, a sheet of paper weighs about one pascal, right? Negative five pascal will reverse the chimneys in a house. So it's very little negative pressure. And it doesn't take much to do it. And if your house isn't loose and you're, you, you got the cooktop running, you got the furnace on, you got the bath fans rocking, this could very easily happen. So if that smoke rolling out of there, what do you do? You go crack a window open, right? And then that house pops back into shape. So when you put an ERV in a house that's, you're either gonna slightly positive pressure the house or you're gonna net zero. What you take in is what you're putting out. So I'm never gonna let that house get into a negative and reverse my chimneys. Because what else is a chimney? <coughs> Your water heater, right? You don't want spillage out of your water heater because you didn't ventilate your property correctly. And we're heating and air ventilation and air conditioning contractors. Just recently do we use the V anymore. You know what I mean? It was like, I'm not gonna ventilate. That's too crazy stuff, right? But what's, thought, what's, what's helped us with that, Dennis? Spray foamed houses, man. These horror score, and some, some of the builders build the house as tight as a spray foamed house without even any spray foam. They're just caulking things really good and putting real thick insulation in there and vapor barrier and the crap out of it. So in a long-winded way, it's not a bypass, okay? Now, when you bring in some fresh air uh, with just a six-inch damper, uh, you know, um, that's just going in the return too, right? So that's just diluting the air in the house to bring in fresher air and, and keeping that house in the slightly positive pressure or uh, or net zero okay anything else any questions online kyle all right so um if you're online um uh, do we know who the online winner we is winner so we're going to go ahead and, and do the online first so uh you want me to just read it this was chosen at random online so who is who's who is ken from comfort control ken 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 say it type in a few words ken <laughs> Where are you from? Congratulations. What's your fears? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Congratulations to Ken. Uh, uh, Resig? Is it? Resig. I think it, it's Resig. Is it Reese? I hope it's Resig. But comfort <laughs> control, where's Ken from? Did he say? Nothing yet. See online? Do we get to pick somebody else? While he's I'm waiting, kidding. I'm kidding. We can uh, do the drawing here. Okay. Should I do person? it? In person. Should I do it? Don't look. Put it behind my back. I don't want anybody to think I'm cheating. All right, I got two. Ken's so from Texas. Goes in. Ken's from Texas. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks for joining us, Ken. And congratulations, and JD will mail that out to you. That's right. Okay, who's Alvin? Alvin, congratulations. congratulations Alvin. All right. All this stuff I've been messing with is now yours. <laughs> <laughs> so you can pack it back up. Here's Yeah, here's the box. And thank you so much, okay? I appreciate your time. Awesome. Um, any, any other questions before we go? Anybody got anything in here? Anything online? Ken from Houston, Texas. Yes, Houston, Houston, Texas. Hey, man, great baseball team, by the way. You know, uh, those guys kill it down there. So not so much the Texans, though. Huh? Where this is? We're in Indy. So, I know. Yeah, I'm a Cubs are, fan. I, I, I appreciate baseball, and <laughs> um, you know. I hear you. Well, thank you, Gary, yeah, so man. much for coming. To give Gary a round of applause again. Right, thanks, man. Doing great. Again, all these products are available at Jackson Systems. Uh, you can always call us direct um, if you have any questions. Our uh, number, you, you'll always get a hold of someone here if you call 888-652-9663. That line is to answer any technical questions, product questions. We don't have a secretary or phone automated system. It goes right to one of our wonderful techs. A lot of people in here use that line uh, constantly. Um, they love the tech support here. Um, and again, you can find all this on the website. Gary's going to provide uh, the slides here, and you'll be able to find it. Uh, on the presentation. They can be downloaded right now if you're online. There's a link to download 
uh, the slides. So be sure to do that and uh, tune in for our next training. Uh, thank you so much for everyone attending online. Thank you everybody here uh, attending in person. You all have a wonderful night. Happy Memorial Day weekend.